When installing the wiring for an aftermarket car audio system, you've probably heard of using these things right here, fuses. But why do we need these? Do we need them if amplifiers have their own built-in fuse? What size fuse do we need? What is the right way to set up everything with fuses for multiple amplifiers? How long should our wire be from the battery before we add a fuse? What type of fuses should we avoid? That's all coming up in this video all about car audio fuses. Welcome to Car Audio Fabrication. My name is Mark and here on this channel, I do gear overview videos, I do build log videos, and I do lesson videos like this video, all about helping you learn how to master car audio so if you enjoy that kind of thing I would love to have you as a subscriber so first things first why do we even need a fuse we all know that when we're installing a new aftermarket amplifier we need to run a power lead from the battery to that new aftermarket amplifier a fuse is meant to protect a circuit in this case the circuit being from the battery to the amplifier and back a very common misunderstanding that I hear is people will say, well, my amplifier already has fuses on it to protect it, so I don't need a fuse on the wire, and this couldn't be more wrong. What you have to understand is a fuse is protecting the full circuit. So not only the gear that is part of that circuit, but it's also protecting the wire that is part of that circuit. You see, if we don't have a fuse and the power wire connected to the positive lead of our battery touches the ground, which is the body of the vehicle, we create what is called a short circuit. A huge rush of electrical current occurs so much so that the wire can't actually handle that amount of current and the wire will start to get hot, hot to the point that it can easily start on fire. So lesson number one here is that the fuse also protects the wiring. But fuses come in many different shapes and sizes. Can we take just any fuse and put it on a wire and now that wire is protected from a short circuit? Not necessarily because the fuse rating might be too high for the size of the wire that we're using. We're gonna talk more about this and picking the right size fuse in a little bit. So how does a fuse work? Inside there'll be a smaller strip of metal where all this metal kind of necks down and it gives us a failure point so if there is too much current going through the fuse exceeding the fuse rating, it will burn through that small amount of metal thus breaking and opening the circuit. So there are many different styles of fuses. Which style fuses should you be looking to use for car audio? For high current applications where you're adding an amplifier, I recommend ANL and mini ANL style fuses. You can get these in many different current ratings, easily up to 300 amps. For smaller devices with a smaller required current, you're gonna use these kind of fuses here. These are blade style ATC and ATM, which are the smaller versions of this style fuse. The fuse style that in my opinion you should avoid are these glass style fuses. The way that these are held in a fuse block, it has a small little spring type clamp that goes on each end. And a lot of times that spring clamp can just become kind of weaker over time, which can lead to not that great of a connection, which leads to resistance in the connection and heat. And a lot of times you'll just see people having issues with these. I would recommend to stay away from them. So what actually holds the fuse and connects it to our wiring? There are different styles of fuse holder and we'll start with this one right here. This is what I would call an inline fuse holder. Most all fuse holders will have a protective cover that we can remove. And in this case, I call this an inline fuse holder because you'll have one input and one output. Usually this is going to be our main system fuse. And this is going to be closest to the positive terminal of the battery. And I wanna go into a little side note real quick here. How close to the battery should this be? I see it all the time where in the instructions, the company will recommend that this is within 18 inches of the positive terminal of the battery. But what I wanna point out is it's not really so important the actual length as taking into account how that wire actually connects from the positive terminal of the battery to the fuse block. What's actually important here is you want that length to be as short as possible because you have to understand that that length upstream of this fuse is not actually protected. So what could happen is if that wire becomes disconnected from our fuse block here and it touches ground, there's no fuse between the positive battery terminal and the end of that wire. So that wire could cause a short circuit and start on fire. That's why instead of using the 18 inch length recommendation, I like the recommendation of keeping that length as short as possible. And if you would like, you could also zip tie the wire to different areas in the vehicle. So if it did somehow become loose from here, it doesn't have the possibility of actually 
touching ground. Now you will find inline fuse holders in different sizes based on the style of fuse that it uses. This is an A&L style fuse, so it's a much larger fuse block, but they also have inline fuse holders for mini A&L, which are considerably smaller. And I wanna point out here that just because a fuse is smaller doesn't necessarily mean less performance or anything like that. You're more going to find that larger fuse blocks like this that can attach to larger wire are usually gonna use the larger wire size. But there are fuse blocks that have a large hole for like a zero gauge wire where you can still use the mini a &L style fuses. If you're only doing a simple system with one added amplifier, you're not adding processors and a bunch of other equipment, an inline fuse holder is the way to go. And really, this is the only fuse that you're gonna need for that simple one connection system. Now, what if we're doing a complex system with multiple amplifiers, multiple pieces of gear, my kind of system, then in that case, we're gonna need an inline fuse holder up by the battery, but then back by the gear, we're gonna have what's called a distribution block. In this case, we definitely want what's called a fused distribution block. Now there are distribution blocks that don't have fuses built into them. And I just wanna point out that you have to be careful with those type of distribution blocks because when you go from a large wire to a smaller wire, remember that that smaller wire has a smaller current handling capability. So if this is not a fused distribution block, you can only use a fuse on your inline fuse holder upstream that is sized for that smaller wire. I'll talk more about this when I show you our system example. With a distribution block, the point is that you're gonna have a feed wire coming in and then you're gonna have multiple wires coming out for your different devices. And with each of those multiple different wires, you can do a different sized fuse. You can even get more fancy and have a distribution block that feeds a wire to another distribution block for several smaller size devices. The biggest thing I want you to take away is anytime you reduce the size of your wire, the fuse rating should not exceed the max current handling capability of that wire. So let's talk about that. How do you choose what size fuse? Perhaps I could give you some clues. Yeah, that was a bad attempt at a rhyme, but I'm gonna show you guys exactly how we can determine what size fuse we need in just a second here. First, I wanna thank our monthly channel sponsor, New Concepts. When it comes to car audio wiring and connection accessories, my go-to source is New Concepts. Their power wire comes in a wide variety of different sizes and colors to match any application. For RCA signal wires, they have all sorts of different options based on your budget, how many channels you need, and the length of the wire. They also have a full lineup of different battery terminals, fuse blocks, and distribution blocks. Definitely consider them for your next system, and you can check them out at newconcepts.com or at the link down in the video description. So let's talk about choosing the fuse size. So to explain what size fuse you need, I've drawn an example system. You'll see that we have the battery up top with its positive lead, which is connected with a wire into the inline fuse. The inline fuse has another wire, which comes down and goes into a distribution block. And then that distribution block has several wires coming out that go to two different amplifiers and we'll just say a digital signal processor. Now remember, these fuses are meant to protect not only our gear, but also the wire. So we have to take both into account to determine what size fuse that we need. Now we're going to find that with many amplifier companies, if we look in the instruction manual, we're going to see the recommended fuse and wire size. But what if we have multiple amplifiers or what if they don't tell you what to use in the manual? I'd rather teach you guys how to do this. So here's the equation that we're going to use current or I equals power in watts over voltage. We're going to start with determining how much current all of our devices need at their max output. So first let's talk about the amplifier power for our system. In this case I have an 1000 watt amplifier and a 400 watts. If we add that together that's 1400 watts of power. Now we have to remember that no amplifier is 100% efficient. So let's say that this is a class D amplifier and it's 80% efficient. So we're going to do 1400 divided by 0.8 and if you were using a class AB amplifier you would use 0.5 to 0.6, somewhere in that range. It's not super important. Let's just say that we're 80% efficient. So this top number is actually going to be 1,750 watts. I talked about this in a previous video and some people were confused. So again, an amplifier cannot be 100% efficient. You can't take 100% of the power coming in and convert it to 100% output. It's only going to be, in this case, with a Class D amplifier, 80% efficient, which means we actually need 1,750 watts of power coming in to 
actually get that 1400 out. Now for our voltage, the bottom number, we're going to use our system running voltage, let's just say 13.8 volts. This could range from 13.8 up to 14.4, in this case, using 13.8. So if we do 1750 divided by 13.8, we get 127 amps. So we know that this part of the system is 127 amps. I know in my DSP manual, it told me four amps. So we know this is about 131 amps of total current that we're going to need to pull through this guy here. Now here's the thing though, they don't make an 131 amp fuse. They make an 120 and they make an 150. So usually if you're close, you're just gonna step up to the next size fuse. In fact, in my case, I would actually probably step down to the 120 just to be extra safe. And because again, remember that we're only gonna be pulling that amount of current when you are at 100% full tilt volume, like literally playing a sine wave. That's the other thing that I think a lot of people get confused with. They think just because they're at max volume, they're pulling max current through their system when if you're listening to music, you're not. If you're listening to a sine wave and it's literally just one constant blast of energy, then yes, you are actually pulling this much current. But in my case, I know that I'm gonna be okay with 120 amps. Now remember, when we did this easy math calculation, it was for the total of our system power. What about each of these separate individual little fuses? For that is simple, you just do each individual leg. So if I was doing 1,000 watts, I'd do 1,000 divided by 0.8, which is my efficiency number, and then I'm gonna do that over 13.8 volts. And that gives me 90.5. So in this case, I'm gonna use an 100 amp fuse for that amplifier. Now, is there a good way to check your math? Yes, there is. If you take the amplifier and you look on the side of it, if it does have an actual fuse built in, in this case on this amplifier, it's a 300 watt amplifier and it has a 30 amp fuse. So let's do the calculation really quick. 300 divided by 0.8% efficiency divided by 13.8 volts. This gives me about 27 amps. So they should be using a 30 amp fuse, which they are. As another quick side note, this is a great way to figure out if amplifier companies are lying to you. If you find this value and then the fuse value on the amplifiers is considerably smaller, Hate to break it to you, but that amplifier is probably not making the rated power. Now the next aspect of this is sizing our wire correctly. So we would do those same calculations. Again, I came up with about 131 amps through this leg. So in order to size this wire, I can use a chart like this. I'll put it up on screen for you guys. If I had 131 amps, it falls in right about here. And if I knew I needed that little leg from here all the way back, to the back of the vehicle to be about 16 feet, so between 15 and 18 feet, I know that I would need a zero gauge run going there. Now what about these smaller runs here? Let's say I know this is gonna be about five feet long from my distribution block to my amplifier. We know that it's about 90.5 amps. So that means this wire would need to be about four gauge. Using a chart like that is important for determining your wire size because where people will get into trouble is they'll do something like using an unfused distribution block where there's no fuses here, it's straight connected, and they'll step down from zero gauge down to four gauge, and they think that that's okay, but they forget that this fuse here can actually handle more current going through it than that four gauge wire can. And that's where you end up having issues is if this four gauge wire shorts out, it is going to burn before this because it becomes the fuse. It can handle less current than what the actual fuse can so that wire can burn. So the takeaway here is whenever you're stepping down from a larger wire size to a smaller wire size, you definitely should be using a fuse to protect that smaller wire size. So we know how to pick our fuse size, but what about some fuse myths? The most popular myth that I hear by far is that adding a fuse puts a bottleneck on your system. In one way, you know what, I guess you're right. It does put a bottleneck on the system because we've introduced an intentional failure point. If we do have a short circuit, we want it to fail inside this fuse. We don't want it to light the wire on fire and catch our vehicle on fire. But the problem here is I think some people look at the fuse and think that it somehow is limiting their system. The idea here is if you've done your calculations, you're picking a fuse size that is slightly larger than the max amount of current that you could ever possibly pull through this fuse. So the point is you're never going to get to the point that that fuse is limiting your system because if you sized everything correctly, 
it would blow by then. In my opinion, where this myth comes from is people use fuses and fuse holders that really aren't of the best quality and they do actually have a lot of resistance across that fuse which does limit the performance of the system. If you want to learn about measuring resistance and measuring voltage drop, I have a great video for you that you would enjoy that you can check out right up here. You can also check out some of my other videos here on screen. A special thanks to New Concepts for being a monthly channel sponsor and a thank you to Anthony, Bernard, Brian, William, Marcos, Michael, Jeremy, Doug, Steve, Emmanuel, Jerry, and the rest of the Patreon membership team. Big thanks to all those guys for making these videos possible. Thank you for watching.